And this is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks. On Tuesday, the 10th day of December, year of Lord 2019, and welcome to the John Moore Show. We begin our shows with something that the top Democrats really don't like. And they're about to find out <laughs> what it really means, <laughs> I think, in the next three or four months. That would be the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Prepper tip of the day, uh, one of my favorite websites is Survival Blog, that's Survival, B-L-O-G, Bravo, Lima, Oscar, Golf, SurvivalBlog.com. In, in serial form, they're reprinting a, a small book titled The Law, that's the uh, title of the book, The Law, published 1950 by Dean Russell. It's an updated translation of a book published uh, in the mid part of the 19th century, uh, originally written in French. And uh, Mr. Russell did a updated translation in 1950 to bring it up to speed with current English language. Um, I read the first installment this morning at survivalblog.com. Very well done. And very important, I think, for people to read and understand. Uh, we will have Mr. Steve Benuna join us in, oh, about um, oh, 10 or 12 minutes or so. Uh, he's got some things he's wrapping up, and he'll be with us, and we'll bring him to the conversation. Uh, if you heard us today's show, uh, you already know what I'm about to say. Uh, if you didn't, you may want to listen to Fires Monday yesterday. That would be December 9th. My guest, Sam Andrews, uh, a gentleman I've known since 1994, the proprietor, the owner of Freedom Center USA, the Facebook page is Freedom Center USA. He mentioned the, the mission statement of Freedom Center, which I've, if I can paraphrase it, he wants to get men and women trained up to defend life and liberty. That's his goal. That's the goal of Freedom Center USA. And it's a very... Uh, worthwhile goal, I, I think a goal that uh, needs to be supported. How would you support that? Well, support it by getting trained up yourself, that's how. If you can't go to Freedom Center for your training, then find a place uh, geographically near you that, that offers high-quality marksmanship training. That would be a smart thing. I can't tell you what's coming the next year or so. I can tell you what the possibilities are. We talk about them all the time possibility of what's being called civil war it's, I'm not sure civil war really describes what's coming, what could come at us uh, massive chaos is maybe a, a, a better way to describe what's coming at us which doesn't have quite the ring that the civil war does regardless of what you call it in 11 months we will have an election the first Tuesday in November. That will be here pretty quick. It's going to be 2020 in 21 days, I believe. Last time I counted, 21 days. It will be 2020. There's a strong possibility that our opposition, that being the socialist, communist, Democrats, Muslims, will enter the violent stage of their scenario causing max, maximum chaos, destruction of property, taking of human life, injuring human beings. There was a, a lot of outage yesterday, which I think continues to this day, to the nationwide Comcast fiber optic network. I saw a map posted, looked like it was north, south, east, west, middle of the country, all over the country. Fiber optic cables had been cut just about the same time. Now, that's clearly an act of terrorism. Of course it is. I don't believe the mass media is reporting it that way. If they're reporting it at all, it's uh, the Comcast um, fiber optic cables being cut is certainly being reported in the alternative media. We're at a point where being cut off from the Internet means pretty much being cut off from our normal daily activities, normal daily e-commerce. That's where we are with the Internet. It has become a non-negotiable 
essential part of our lives. Yes, there's workarounds. The old thing, the things we used to use. Telephones, assuming the telephones still work, fax machines, postal service, uh, and, and delivery services and things like that, all of which still exist, thank goodness. All of which still work, thank goodness. All of which take generally a lot more time than the things we're used to doing on the Internet. Now, living where I live out here in Davisville, Missouri, uh, the Internet's been a godsend. I moved out here. I had to sit down and think when it was eight, about, about 18 years ago. I had dial-up Internet for about four weeks. They were already working their way through the neighborhood, the um, contractor installing the fiber optic cable. I was here about four weeks, and the fiber optic cable came past my house, and I've had high-speed Internet ever since. Thank goodness. It's a, oh, not quite, about a 40-minute, 40 45-minute drive to the first red, yellow, and green traffic signal from where I live. It's 12 miles to the nearest community, Fiburnum, Missouri, where there's a, a small supermarket, a gas station, a couple of gas stations, actually, and uh, some of the amenities that you might expect in a small town, medical services, police services, uh, insurance office, uh, various vendors offering various things uh, to repair automobiles and so forth, a hardware store. That's 12 miles away. So I'm in a pretty remote area. Yesterday, for example, I was working on the roof. We needed more roofing nails, and I made a run, I made the run to town to get the roofing nails uh, 12 miles one way. In fact, I'll be back up on that roof this afternoon. It's not going to be nearly as warm. It'll be probably in the, in the mid to high 30s. And I'll be finishing up the small roof. It's about, um, oh, 16 by 8 feet. Not terribly big. And all, all it's been roofed with, except for the final three or four feet of one side of the, of the gabled roof. And I'll be up there uh, probably mid-afternoon, around 1 or 2 o'clock, putting those final shingles on the roof. It's a project that's been in the works for quite a while, but we had a work party out here yesterday and, and got most of it done. Regardless, regardless, what happened yesterday with Comcast was an intentional act. It was an act of terrorism, industrial sabotage. You can hang different labels on it, which all of which may be true. What, what was that? Well, it may have been a training exercise for Sputznats. Sputznats is here. Sputznats is an acronym for the Russian Special Forces. Don't know. I can speculate as much as and as well as anybody can speculate. That's all it is. Without evidence, it's just pure speculation. Sputznats, Muslims, uh, competitors of Comcast. I mean, there's lots of possibilities. My mantra, what I always come back to, is preparedness. Preparedness for you and your family. We like to study these things. We like to become aware of them. We like to do what we can to mitigate, which is limited. But the, um, where the rubber meets the road is you and your family being safe. That's where the rubber meets the road, going back to a 1960s TV commercial for tires. That's where you need to be. Your primary focus needs to be. I've seen people get distracted with this and with that. Lots of distractions out there. Teenage boys getting into the girls' locker room. Um, lots of distractions <laughs> that we can uh, get distracted by. That the Earth is flat. Another massive distraction, uh, fantasy that that distracts. No telling how many thousands or tens of thousands of people. Don't get distracted. Don't distract. Don't don't lose focus of what's important. What's important is the people you love and care for. That's what's important. And it would be foolish, foolhardy, to get distracted from what's important and devote resources. What are resources? Time and money. To foolishness, which most Americans do most of the time. Foolishness like spending, well, my, my son-in-law was telling me about a man he, he works with who spends $240 a month 
on cable TV. That's off the charts crazy. That's a car payment. Or at least it used to be. I think you could probably still make a car payment for two hundred forty dollars a month. In my neighborhood, you could just about make a house payment for two hundred forty dollars a month. What insanity! I regard it as insanity. I grew up what when when I was a small boy, a, uh, a toddler. We had one TV station in St. Louis. A few years later, two. A couple of years after that, three. The, the, the three major networks: ABC, CBS, and, and so forth. Free TV. It's still available. I told my son-in-law about this so about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, they bought an antenna, stuck it to the window of the, of the front living room window, and they have free TV and are saving, I don't know what their cable bill was, maybe 50 bucks a month. And my daughter and, and her husband, they don't feel deprived. The twins, 13-year-old boy and girl, they don't feel deprived at all. They've got television that they can gaze at, and they're quite satisfied with that. And happy to, and mom and dad are happy to have the fifty bucks a month in their account instead of the account of the cable TV people. I just recently dropped Netflix. It, it, uh, I, I sent them a notice. I didn't need it anymore. I just, I was just thinking the other day. I, I haven't watched anything on Netflix, Netflix since my wife died back in June, six months ago this month. Why would I pay this money every month for something I'm not using? That's pretty silly, isn't it? Now, I do have Amazon Prime, uh, and that's, there's benefits from that that I do make use of every day, the free delivery. And I know there's people who, for political reasons, don't engage with Amazon, and I understand that, and I, I, I don't challenge that a bit. Uh, they aren't living the lifestyle I'm living, however. If I need a bottle of my favorite wash, mouthwash, I can go through Amazon Prime, have it delivered to my door, cheaper than I can go to Walmart and get it, or any other place as far as that goes. I just use that as just one example of the the value that's in uh, Amazon and Amazon Prime. Now, that, that does give me access to about a quarter million movies and TV shows, by the way, if I choose to exercise that, which I haven't looked at that either for six months. One reason being, I now have a hobby. And uh, my hobby is a half-century-old British sports car. I'm the TR6. My first car was a Triumph, the TR3. And um, it's kind of a, 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 a big deja vu in some regard. Uh, doing things I did when I was 18 years old. Uh, working on an old automobile. Learning new things and uh, learning new skills. Acquiring the tools to do the things and studying up on the the uh, owner's manual, and the shop manual, and, and all that related matters. And and for me, it's just I find it an enjoyable hobby. Everybody everybody should have a hobby, in my opinion. That's that's a good way to spend dis- discretionary time, a productive way. At, le- at least it can be productive. <laughs> I'm working on something that is a family asset. Uh, a collectible automobile as opposed to playing video games for example or just watching mindless television which when I was with my wife in the city taking care of her we did have cable TV it was the fa- her family's home that she grew up in and it was on some of the time and, and what a wasteland what a wasteland uh, cable TV or any TV as far as that goes so that's gone um, when, I, when, when my wife passed, uh, I moved back to my home, and uh, no cable TV here. Never has been, probably never will be. That may change, but I don't. I don't anticipate it changing anytime soon. But getting back to the topic at hand, taking care of the people you love, the people you're related to by blood and marriage, people that you love because they're part of your team maybe members of your church, maybe maybe neighbors, and so forth. There's different levels of caring. Obviously, your children, your grandchildren, your spouse are going to be the people you care for the most. Of course, that's the way it should be. And there's others you're going to want to care for. And I advocate neighborhood preparedness. Not the island concept where it's me and mine against the world. That's a foolish thing that's doomed to failure. 
what works is the entire community being prepared. That's what works. Long term, that's what works. The neighborhood looking out for each other, the neighborhood taking care of each other. That's what we're doing here in Davisville, Missouri, to the best of our ability. Now, we're not. what we're doing is not perfect. It doesn't include the entire neighborhood. Of course not. Of course not. But we do what we can. We outreach the ones we can. We uh, established our training schedule for 2020. Uh, Saturday at our preparedness meeting, we had a potluck dinner, homemade chili, and, and some excellent side dishes. And we got our 2020 training schedule put together. I don't have it here in front of me, but includes first aid class, CPR, ham radio, uh, uh, the identification and gathering of wild herbs and wild edibles. Uh, it'll be a map and compass course, a carbine class, a reloading class. We're going to combine the reloading class and the carbine class, I think, in one class this year. But uh, that's what we're doing here. I don't know what you're doing in your area. Uh, maybe you're doing something. Maybe you're doing nothing. You've got 11 months. 11 months may seem like a long time right now, but I assure you, in no uncertain terms, that these 11 months will fly by so fast make your head spin. For anything that, that does take a little time, such as getting your ham radio license, right now is the time to get started. Right now is the time to get started with studying for your ham radio license, taking your test, getting your license, getting your ham radio equipment. Right now is the time to get your first aid training and the supplies and equipment to go with it. Right now is the time to get your CPR training. And thus, I was hoping that Steve would be with us by now, but Steve hasn't joined us yet. Here's our first break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on 
Tuesday, the 10th day of December. My website is thelibertyman.com. Scroll down the left side near the top there. You'll see the notice for, well, there's two notices. Uh, the first one has to do with the John Moore Patriot Symposium Cruise. We're leaving Port Orlando Sunday the 9th of February, returning a week later, Saturday the 16th. Details at my website at thelibertyman.com. Right below that, we're having a conference. Steve Ben Noon. Uh, good morning, Steve, by the way. Good morning. Um, <laughs> Steve and I are doing a conference in Orlando Saturday, the 8th day of February, at the um, hotel there. Uh, was it Embassy Suites? Yes, Embassy Suites by Hilton. Embassy Suites by Hilton. And you can um, get some details there, and uh, we have a process to, to get tickets uh, purchased as well. Only $25, which is a real value. Well, Steve, um, twice uh, last week, uh, we had two uh, military bases attacked. The second one down there in uh, Florida was a attack by the religion of peace, once again. And... Um, we had uh, at least one hero that uh, paid for his heroism with his life uh, at the at the uh, naval base at, at uh, in Florida. Um, now, geographically, how far away is that from where you are, sir? It's about six hours away from me, and that's in northwest Florida. Uh, my mother was actually born on NAS Pensacola in the old uh, naval hospital up there, and. Um, in fact, my grandfather, he was stationed there, retired there, so I lived up in that area for a long time myself. Um, and at Scambia County Sheriff's Department, I actually worked with Scambia County Sheriff's Department. Uh, it's been a long time ago. But uh, <clears throat> it was kind of when I heard about this shooting, of course, that caught my attention anyway with it being NAS Pensacola. But, you know, one of the Strangest things that made me wonder, too, is why a Scambia County Sheriff's Department was responding on the base. Other than now, the I wondered about that, too. Now, first of all, NAS stands for Na uh, Naval Air, 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 what is it? Naval Air Station. Air, Air, Naval Air Station. Uh, tell us about that, because I, typically uh, local law enforcement does not enter the premises of a military base. What happened there? Well, that's what I'm trying to still figure out is... How did how did the uh, Scammy County Sheriff's Department? I, I saw one place in the articles that they came out with is that um, that the, the call went out to uh, the Scammy County Sheriff's Department that there was an active shooter on the base, and um, you know, and that of course the base has the right to allow uh, the Scammy County Sheriff's Department to come as a backup unit on the base. That is true; they can let them through, but. NAS has always had their own law enforcement uh, force there on the base, regular police officers that actually are there. Um, now, you know, tell us about who these who these men and women are, this regular, uh, are they military, uh, con civilian contractors, what are they? Uh, they're civil service, and, you know, just like, uh, but it's just a regular law enforcement unit there. They're trained, same as uh, the sheriff's department would be trained, but, of course, their own training there on the base. Uh, most of the police officers out there are normally former military. Uh, and, and on top of that, you have military police that are on base as well. So they, they have very capable uh, military police there to handle any type of situation. But, you know, as it is in, in northwest Florida there, I know when I work with the Scambi County Sheriff's Department, if you've got something like uh, a shooting going down, which back in the in the early 80s, I remember we had two different bank robberies that went on, and everybody responds to that. It doesn't matter if it's in your jurisdiction or not. We always respond because it goes out over, um, they can put it out on a radio band that we had then to where both city could hear it, the, the, uh, the state troopers could hear it. Um, in fact, I even saw state troopers there in one of the videos as well, Florida state troopers that were, also responding uh, to that. So I'm assuming that that's the reason why they were there, uh, unless something changed, John. And that's something I was curious about. Uh, had Escambia County Sheriff's Department started patrolling that area? Because 
they were the ones that actually responded to the shooter. And I'm like, how could they have gotten there before anybody else? That didn't make any well, sense. That, that, and that doesn't make any sense. First of all, uh, this is a really big place. There's 16,000 military employees, 7,400 civilian employees. Uh, that's a small city. It is. And the thing is, NAS Pensacola, just from the front gate or even the back gate, doesn't matter which gate you go into to get to the location where this is at. It's not anything anywhere close. And the, you know, you'd have to, you know, I actually uh, worked Warrington was one of my districts that I worked when I worked there. And uh, so I would think from the front gate, Warrington uh, uh, Sheriff's Department, whoever's working that particular area would respond. But even in Warrington, you're only going to have one, maybe two officers that are working that area there. Same thing at the back gate, which would have been down closer to Orange Beach. Uh, the jurisdiction. Hold that, hold that thought, uh, Steve. We got a break. Call numbers eight hundred three one three nine four four three. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. J.R. Moore here on to Tuesday. It is Tuesday, the 10th day of December. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. I'm now on with Doug Hagman for an hour every Monday. The Hagman Report, Doug Hagman. He was very complimentary uh, of one thing that's on my website. It's updated daily. It's called the Daily Intelligence Briefing. A friend of mine I met while I was conducting a homicide investigation. He's a, a former counterintelligence agent. He puts this together every day. It's a lot of work. Dozens of new articles from around the world posted daily under daily intelligence briefing at my website at thelibertyman.com. In case you've been uh, living in a cave the last uh, few weeks, Christmas is not far away. That's right. A couple of weeks. If you already have an energy cleaner and you got arthritis relief and you're sleeping as good as I do every night, sleeping as good as a small child every night because of your energy cleaner, what a great gift for somebody. It has arthritis, has sleep issues, has both. I use mine every night. I'll be up on a roof today putting down shingles, up and down a ladder, up and down off my knees, doing things I typically don't do physically. Yeah, I'll be hurting at the end of the day. Of course I will. And I'll be looking forward to getting on that energy cleaner signal tonight, sleeping a great night's sleep and waking up pain-free in the morning. That's what the energy cleaner does. Keep in mind, I offer a 90-day money-back guarantee. Details at my website at thelibertyman.com, under products, top drop-down menu. Check out the energy cleaner, the mattress pads that go with them. You can place your order right there using PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. You can call my toll-free order line 24 hours a day. Don't try to call me. You won't get me. Order lines only. 
800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. Visiting Mr. Steve Ben Noon, his website is israelinewslive.org. I say again, israelinewslive.org. Steve, we got a car on hold here. We got John in Tennessee. Good morning, John. Consider to be false flags, Pensacola and uh, Pearl Harbor. You know, the same thing happened to Pearl. The local police responded before the uh, military police. I've been down to Pensacola. It's hard to get on to Pensacola Naval Air Base. I can't imagine how someone would get on there to conduct uh, supposedly a uh, uh, spontaneous terrorist attack to be true. Well, John, they, were, they, they had the proper, John, 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 they had the proper identification. The man had, he was supposed to be there. He was there every day as a student. He had the proper credentials. He had the proper authority. He walked in the, or drove in the gate every day because that's what he was supposed to do. No surprise. Probably lives on the base, John. And uh, most likely, too, had on-base housing. Didn't even have to come on the base. Well, see, I, I haven't heard anything about it being a Muslim. So, you know, in the news, well, I haven't heard that reported. He, he's a Saudi national. He's a Muslim. His name was Mohammed, I believe. If I were, is that right, Steve? Uh, yeah, I can actually yeah. tell you here in a second. If you're from Saudi Arabia, your name's Mohammed. How many guesses do you need, there, John? Well, I'll, 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 look, look, um, look, listen, listen, guys. I know a lot of Egyptians that are from the Middle East that are Coptic Christians. They're Christian men. Just because someone is from Saudi Arabia doesn't mean they're a Muslim, John. God well, came to save Paul. <laughs> He's uh, laugh, man. I mean, he wants him saved too, doesn't he? If you're so if you're from if you're broad... from Saudi Arabia and your name's Muhammad, it's highly unlikely you're anything other than a Muslim. Well, the thing is, the guy's name is Muhammad Al Sham Arani, and and you know I do agree that you know in Egypt and of course Syria the, and even in even in, in Iran uh, there's over a million Christians. It's one of the fastest growing uh, movements in Iran. Saudi Arabia, of course, they'll cut your head off if you start thinking Christianity in Saudi Arabia. But to go to the one point about. Um, uh, the, what's going on there as far as these uh, foreign nationals on NAS Pensacola. This has been going on for many, many years. Uh, the, the, the Naval Air Station there, which it's a main training naval uh, 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 air, air base for training foreign pilots. Uh, I've seen Russians there, uh, you know, er every nationality you can possibly imagine. If we've got an agreement with that country, uh, and they're buying our planes, uh, we are training them. Uh, so it's no surprise. And, you know, they say that in the article that they cannot, you know, it's, there's guns are not prohibited on the base. And I know that is the policy. But what people don't understand, even though the uh, NAS police are the ones that guard the gate, uh, of course, at times it's the actual Navy personnel that are guarding the gate, it, that does rotate back and forth, or it did years ago, um, <clears throat> you know, as far as whether the military is doing it or whether the, the police are doing it. And the thing is, is that you come through, they're checking your ID, but they don't always search your vehicle. And this man used a handgun uh, in this exchange. And, of course, the caller mentions that, you know, it, could this be a false flag? And there's always that possibility. There's also the possibility that a false flag is carried out using uh, mind control type techniques as well. So, but anyway, well, here's, here's the thing: when when I was when I was in the military, we were training uh, at that time Iranian pilots to fly the A7. Okay, we were told don't go on that side of the base because if they knife you to death, we can't touch them. So we were doing it in the, in the 70s. Here's my question, and I think this makes sense. We've got civilian contractors doing work that the military ought to do. We had it going on in the 70s. There's no reason that a, that a civilian contractor ought to be guarding the gate at a naval base. It's right down the street from Eglin, guys. It's, you know, the Air Force base is right there. They're doing the same thing. If you call the base and get a hold of the CBPO, you're going to get a civilian 
picking the phone up that knows nothing about the military for the most part. So while we're doing this, we're bringing it on. If they know that it's been going on at Pensacola for years and they've done nothing to mitigate or remediate or prevent the situation, the only logical conclusion is they wanted it to happen. Help it happen on purpose. Let it happen on purpose. Or maybe even make it happen on purpose. Well, I have to agree in, in one aspect of that. There is... There could be, here, here's the whole thing. We don't know for sure if this is just a man acting out of terrorist mm-hmm. out of a terrorist act because he's got this on his mind, or whether or not it's a genuine, um, uh, or excuse me, or whether or not it's just a uh, a setup. There's no way of, we'll never know the answer to that because even if it were the case, they're going to keep that always under wrap. Nobody will never know anything. Uh, but or or a Manchurian candidate. I mean, I know it sounds it sounds out out on a limb somewhere, but we are so programmed as a nation to blindly call someone a radical Muslim because their name is Muhammad. I've met a lot of them that are really nice men, nice women. So to say they're they're Muslim, so they're a killer. It's foolishness, man. Uh, and I understand that, uh, but at the same time, you know, the, of course, they're being careful about calling this uh, an act of terrorism. And, of course, the reason being is because the Saudi government is one of the largest uh, uh, buyers of our military hardware here in this country. Not to mention we have the uh, the OPEC agreement with them. They are the main supplier of oil and natural, uh, you know, for, to the United States to make gas with. So th- it's really kind of an awkward situation for President Trump to have to deal with. And, of course, the Saudi government is already trying to cooperate, and they're trying to downplay this. And, I, and I, even though that uh, some of the senators are already calling it a terrorist act, I have a feeling they're going to be very careful about labeling it such because they don't want to jeopardize the relationship with the Saudi government. And so I'm kind of curious to they, see how this is going to play out. They really don't care. You know, 19, supposedly, 19 Arabs flew two planes into two buildings in New York City and knocked down three buildings. You know, we haven't been to Saudi Arabia yet. We had to go to Afghanistan. Then we had to go to Iraq. Then we had to leave Afghanistan to get Arabs. Arabs aren't in Afghanistan, guys. There was about Saudi Arabia we, is our friend. Well, uh, I'm going to support what you're saying here, John. There was about two school buses, about 100 Saudis in Afghanistan. We went to war with an entire country because school, two school bus exactly. loads of Saudis in that country. That's absurd. That's <laughs> insane. But that is, in fact, what we did. Well, we, we went there to protect the poppy fields because the Taliban was doing what they were doing. And there's a lot of money in drugs. They were struggling, smuggling drugs home from Vietnam in the bodies of dead American soldiers. And they didn't want the poppy fields in, Saudi, in Afghanistan to go up in flames. That's why we went. So all of this foolishness, in my opinion, it's foolishness to to broadly brush an entire race of people that, hey, I can I can take you places where there's white guys that I don't want to be around because they're, they'll kill you to look at you. They'll kill you. They want you dead. So to think that because someone has olive skin and is from somewhere in the Middle East, that they're my enemy without them having done anything to provoke me, I'd be dumb as a box of rocks to carry that attitude through my life. I okay, John. You on that. We, we, John, we do thank you for your call. we got another caller we need to get to. Uh, next we go to Murr in Wisconsin. Good morning, Murr. Good morning. Hi, John and Steve. I had sent you, um, and I sent around to a bunch of people, uh, The there was a live shooter drill and... February at Pearl Harbor, and then the this sh- this shooting. And there was a live shooter drill in Orange Beach, Alabama, which is right across the waterway there from Pensacola, right? That was in September. 
And I was, I don't see where I sent that to you, but I did just bring up the article, so well, I can't. I did see that, but the active duty, active shooter uh, drills take place all over, in, even my little community here. We've had active shooter drills uh, here in our little community. They happen all over the country, all the time, Murr. John? That's just the nature of the modern world. There's factions within our government, as you well know, trying to bring us down really roughly. Empires must come down. So they don't have to come down roughly. Now, just last week... Dennis Fetcho, he's in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. He has a radio show over on Rev Radio where you simulcast on Saturdays. And he trains pilots. And he says they only send the best of the best to America. But just like, well, did you see the FISA report from last night? I have read, read some summaries. Well... I'll send you what I sent. John John was in a mood of some sort, of, apparently, Stat Miller. I don't know. But anyway, that report is bogus, so Horowitz is in on it. They made a special font for the M in Comey and made it an R. If you blow it up, you can see there's a little gap. And if you do a search on the site, you get 149 hits for Corny and no hits for Comey. So this is bogus. So they're doing all these kind of things. And if I don't know if you know about Mitchell Henderson, but he's been around different places, uh, Renson, but he was on with Mike Rivero last week. And in a nutshell, the training in 86 that he received, when he was uh, asked what he would do with the soldier that was, you know, put everyone in jeopardy, and he told them what he would have to do. They would dig a deep hole, they would bury, kill him and bury him deep with all his gear and his weapons and then tell the parents that he was very brave so they wouldn't suffer for that. Now, come full forward, and everyone gets killed in Afghanistan because they go through, they have to have their tactics approved through the JAG officer, who happened to be a woman who wanted the Afghan police to come out, and they're not coming out at night. So everyone gets killed. There was one survivor. I guess there was a book about the lone survivor. So everyone gets killed but one instead of one getting killed but everyone. So it's it's uh, opposite, you know, which is basically what a revolution is. And I'm just saying that these are unique, perilous times, okay? And Obama set a lot of this up where he got rid of all the good generals. And I'm sure you probably know about Kay Griggs and her findings about how so many of them are compromised in horrible ways to even reach any kind of top-notch position. So... You know, there's a lot of good, too, but there's also, if you remember even back to Albert Pike, they're going to pit the Muslims and the Christians. This is this is the plan. So, right. It is anyway, the plan. I'll send that live shooter drill to you if you want, but I'm just saying they're doing these, and if they don't, have, a lot of times they'll have a live shooter drill, and they'll very, you know, they won't talk about it much. They had Sutherland Spring. Now, I know Steve said people died there that he knew. Now, I don't know how what the circumstances there are, but the next, the clues that left that they followed led to the Majestic Theater in Dallas next. And there were 3,000 people participating in that, and they only talked about it locally in the news for three days. And so we were calling around and telling everybody there's going to be a live shooter drill. So that one right. stayed a drill. Cause what you're, making do a lot of you're making connections there, my dear, that don't exist. Active duty well, do exist. shooting drills take place all over this country every Listen, they go day live, the John. They go live, and then they pretend they're real. No, that hasn't happened. Oh, yes, it has. Many times. Poway, for one, the rabbi's fingers grow back. I don't think so. Pittsburgh? No. Come on. Look at, look at reality. I'm sorry. I hate to burst your bubble, but that is no, no how it is. And I wish it right weren't. No yeah, I know. Well, you, you, you told me Noah Hyde is just ceremonial, too, and we all want to believe that. But that's not really the case either. It has either. the same no. status as National Ice Cream Day, which is the third Sunday of every July. That's the well, legal we're dealing status with of the demonic liars and killers. We're dealing with demonic liars and killers. Get back to the topic. The Noah Hyde laws have the same status as National Ice Cream Day, the third Sunday of every July. Get over it. What did, what did Steve tell us about this when they had the sacrifices over there? Isn't this leading What's it got to, to do else? with the Noah Hyde laws in the United States? Nothing. You're making connections do that don't exist. United States are goyim. 
you're making you're making it's not unrelated. You, if your concern is the legal status of Noah Hyde laws in the United States, I'm telling you, my dear, they have the same status as National Ice Cream Day in the United States legal code. That's the status of the Noah Hyde laws in the United States. Anything else doesn't matter. Okay, I know you're a good and just man, John, and I really appreciate that, and that's why I'm calling. Well, I make but my we are dealing with these laws. You don't, and I know you we mean are well, dealing, but you don't understand what you're talking about. We are dealing with demonic liars and killers, and you know that. You know the children, what's going on with them, right? I know we them, are, right? but you're, if you're, missing, you're mixing apples and oranges. If you're concerned about the legal status of Noah High laws, let's stick to the topic. It has the same status as National Ice Cream Day, and none of the rest of this even matters. But, but John, let me ask you this, though. All right? I have one opponent. In fact, I was did a video about him yesterday, and that's uh, uh, Yitzhak Shapir, Rabbi Yitzhak Shapir. He's from Israel, and we butt heads over a lot of issues. He's in India right now. And he came out in an emergency video, and I have never seen this man against Noahide laws ever. He said the movement in India is so rapid. He said the money pouring in from the ultra-Orthodox Jews in India to set up the Noahide law system in India is epidemic. I was shocked that he even said that because his good friend Mark that's Yitzhak Shapira, and oh, he just okay. did a video last night from India that it's an epidemic movement. Uh, it's being heavily funded by Orthodox Jews in uh, India, and I understand that the United States right now, it's a ceremonial law, but again, I would have to argue, if we were doing a ceremonial law for for Sharia law in the United States, Americans would be up in arms about it, whether it's ceremonial or not. And yeah, but we did that in Israel. Exactly, but when you have a law, though, that 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 even ceremonial or not, when mm-hmm. you have a law that calls for the beheading of Christians that presidents are signing every year as a ceremonial law, what kind of what kind of nonsense is that for a president to sign a law? that calls for the beheading of a Christian. That's they the same. Do that for, they Sharia. do that for political reasons, for political gain. That's why they do it. They don't care what it says. I know, but the thing is, John, to, to have a law to call for the beheading of a Christian and a president have the do it for political reason, he's not for the American people, man. Oh, I agree. I, I agree with what you're saying, Steve, on one hand. On the other, there's no force of law behind it. It's just a ceremonial right. I agree with that at this, as of right now. But, you know, I guess the point being here is we're seeing it growing on, you know, it's actually already gone to the United Nations. Uh, it is well, I agree we need to be atten- pay attention to it and be aware of it. But look, we, we're quickly running out of time this hour. Let's move on to our next caller, Steve. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. And uh, that would be Dave in Texas. Good morning, Dave. Hey, good morning, John. Thanks for uh, showing some sanity in this discussion. People are, are taking uh, little pieces of fact here and there and, and weaving more uh, with great Great it's leaps. called ex- it's called extrapolation. Uh, what it is? It's called uh, extrapolation, yes, Dave. Is yes. what it's called. But go ahead. Well, anyways, and they're they're well meaning, but they're just leaping. Anyways, I'm a former Air Force fighter pilot, and I got to train with these people. They had these uh, training programs. They've been going on like the one caller said since the seventies. He's uh, he's wrong in in many respects about uh, the whole purpose uh, behind. Uh, the training and uh, who gets to come to the training. I heard a, a description of only the best and the brightest get to come over here uh, to that training. Uh, I think the lady was saying that. Well, that's not true. The people that come from the uh, Middle Eastern countries uh, to train in the United States, the Muslim countries to train over here, are almost exclusively connected with the royal family, offshoots of the royal family. They have uh, deep connections in the power base over there uh, because it's a very prestigious position to have they're not the best they're not the brightest in many cases they're 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 very weak pilots but there's one thing that they are they're muslims there's muslims they're 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 all muslims now 
Erdogan, the president of Turkey, said it best, I think. He said there is no radical Islam. There is no extreme Islam. There is only Islam. Right. And if you read, if you read the, the Quran, if you read the Hadiths, uh, the various, quote, books uh, of um, Islam, you're going to see that their purpose is, is a nefarious one, and they can lie straight to your face. They can be as nice as They'll be pleasant, as, uh, they will smile, will they will shake their hand, they'll be your friend, but they hate you and they want to kill you. That's exactly right, and when the day comes down where they uh, are activated, and you thought it was a nice neighbor, that's, you know, there may be some like that, but that is not what the religion is about, and I just wanted to clear that up. You did a very good job of it, Dave. Thank you. Um, All right. Good day. Thank you, sir. And let's um, go to question. Steve, where did this hour go? Well, you you were a little bit tardy getting in, so <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we uh, got we got some uh, good questions and and some good uh, dialogue there. Um, well, Steve, what what word do you want to leave our listeners with uh, this week before we wrap it up here in about two two and a half minutes? I think they should next week on Monday listen into the show with uh, Doug Hagman. I I'll, I'll be curious myself. I like him so, but uh, you know, hey, one thing I would just encourage people is to be at the conference. And uh, John, are you, what, what are you? Let me ask you this: Are you going to be speaking? Or will it maybe be a combination of um, what to expect uh, next year about, uh, oh, say, 11 months out? And Well, we'll cover as much as we can in the time given. Uh, okay. And, 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 of course, by February, it won't be 11 months. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And plus, a lot more things will have already probably come down the pipe and and then maybe even if you can uh, touch on, uh, and I don't want to wear you down with all this here, but you got plenty of time in the morning there. Maybe we can talk about uh, um, the coming Planet X pole shift, however it's called, whatever is going to cause that. Well, that. That topic always comes up in these live presentations, and, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll bring people up to speed on that also. Uh, that that's When I will tell you this, I did, and I'll say it just in closing, John, here. I had an uh, interesting conversation with my source at the Pentagon and he conferred, uh, confirmed with me that the government is anticipating. He said, actually, he said this uh, binary system that will be coming by is not the biggest concern they have. He said it's the meteorite uh, debris field the Earth is going to pass through before that. That's right. That's the immediate concern and one of those big rocks hitting the ocean. Steve, yeah. thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you, John. it. Great. Okay, we've got top of the hour break. We'll be back with Leon Green. So Tuesday, the 10th day of December. Prep tip of the day, uh, one of my favorite websites, survivalblog.com. Survival blog, that's Bravo, Lima, Oscar Golf, survivalblog.com, is uh, publishing in serial form the book titled The Law, published 1950 by Dean Russell. The title of the book, once again, is The Law. Published in 1950 by Dean Russell. It's a uh, most recent, that I'm aware of, most recent translation of the book written in French in the mid 19th century. It gets into the, the, the foundational basis of having uh, laws, having a disciplined, uh, lawful society, how to do it right and how to screw it up. And um, it's, it's a well done book, uh, originally published. In the 1840s, I believe. All right. Uh, we have patient waiting in the green room, my friend Leon Green. Leon began a quest more than a decade ago to become quite informed, quite well educated in all the many ways that incorporating doTERRA essential oils into your daily life can help you have what we all want a fun, full, happy, healthy, productive life. Good morning, Leon. Good morning, John. How are you doing, sir? Well, really good. Um, Later today, I'm going to be uh, up on a roof uh, putting down shingles. It will be about 35, 36 degrees. I'll be dressed appropriately going up and down the ladder you know, using a hammer and roofing nails and a cutter to cut the shingles with. And um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm probably going to be needing a little bit of uh, deep blue in addition to my energy cleaner. Deep blue is something that athletes use uh, before they train and after they train 
to help. In fact, I may put some deep blue on before I, I start climbing up and down that ladder. What do you think, Leon? That, that's a great idea. When I go skiing five, six, seven days back to back, I put that on in the morning before I hit the slopes and then after. So, yes, that'd be a great idea. I'd also use a lot of peppermint on your nose for mental clarity and also for breathing up and down the stairs. Well, that's good, too. And, and uh, my uh, grandson, who just uh, finished his last um, college football game, he'll be um, going into uh, training to, to uh, possibly get an NFL contract. Um, nice. I first introduced him to the peppermint um, about you know, two, three years ago. And I said, uh, put a drop underneath each nostril. And he put about five or six underneath each nostril and just about <laughs> knocked him over. <laughs> <laughs> tough kid um but they call the, they call what these young men do the combines and there are uh, uh, times when the young men get together and they demonstrate their skill sets to the um, nfl scouts and he'll be he's already training for that and um he's had nfl scouts talking to him for a couple of years already but the um the deep blue and the uh, peppermint are something that he incorporates into his routine also Yes, sir. And yes, when I when I do all these highly active sports, I um wore hiking this last week, and I was doing lots of stairs. I would um, you know, I would do it at, at night because I'm just exhausted. We we're talking about climbing the equivalent of the Eiffel Tower. Tower. And so yes, it, it, in carrying junk. So yes, it, it starts to um it starts to wear on your your body. So and and, and that's one of the things that people forget. That, you know, with all this electricity, the modern convenience of you know, hand washing is is going to go back. People are going to be doing it unless they get that that Maytag ringer wash or hook it up to a bicycle. They're going to be doing lots of physical work, cutting wood um, after they run out of gas and their wood splitter is, um, is dead or an EMP. And so a lot of physical work is going to be done that people are not going to think that uh, they're so used to walking, especially if they're, they're, not, they're not going to be wasting gas and walking around the neighborhood because it's, it's, it's going to be such a valuable commodity. So, yeah, a lot of physical activity is going to be needed, and people will be in, in dire need for, for pain, abatement, and soothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the time to stock up on these things, of course, is now. If the balloon goes up and normal commerce uh, is either shut down or, or restricted, uh, getting our hands on the Lutero products will be much more uh, problematic, wouldn't it, there, Leon? Absolutely, and, and even, even though I have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of bottles, I, I look at it and I'm thinking I need more because it's not only me. There's some other people at my my group and my team that are going to need it too, especially if because of their antibiotic and antibacterial properties. And actually, I should not say you can use an antibiotic because the oils are not antibiotics. We're, we're so programmed, and that's a mis, that's a misstatement I said right. in the past. The, they're actually pro-life. They actually will kill um, toxic uh, bacteria and viruses, but they're antiviral, not antibacterial, but they're not antibiotic by any stretch of the word. So I'm glad I just caught that right now. Well, it's easy to slip into uh, the wrong uh, way of, of stating something because we get so used to saying certain things in a certain way, don't we, Leon? Absolutely. You know, common speak, I guess, you, you might be a good way to describe it. Right, right. Like, uh, well, for heard- example, m- many people refer to any photocopier as a Xerox machine, for example. I, I just yes, use that as an example. Um, well, the oils work, and we have uh, many listeners who have figured this out. Uh, they've done the following. They got copies of the book Modern Essentials, the 11th edition, just published in September, the 5th edition, I've published a few years back. In fact, I just bought a, a new fifth edition for a friend uh, that I want to get, help get up to speed. And um, uh, they've they've gone to my website. They've started uh, getting the doTERRA oils for themselves and their families. And uh, so the people are, are, are paying attention. Every week we, uh, we're talking to new people. With me being on with Doug Hagman every week now, I'm, I'm picking up. Uh, more listeners. Uh, Doug has a massive audience, and he and I uh-huh. hit it off so well. We, we've both been uh, detectives for decades, and uh, in fact, you were a private investigator yourself at one time, Leon. So um, uh-huh. we're also getting point being we're always getting new listeners every week, 
people who never heard of John Moore, people who never heard of Leon Green, and certainly never heard of doTERRA oils. Uh, and um, so our job is to alert people and educate and wake up people uh, every week to what they're missing. Right, Leon? Absolutely. And, you know, um, many people have you know, asked me, well, haven't we meet, uh, met um, market saturation? And even though the, the state of Utah is where it's uh, originated, and that's where the headquarters is, you know, they have less than 8% of market penetration there. So when people say, oh, doesn't everybody know about it? No. And and, and, and you got to remember, there's, you know, over 7 billion people in the world, and we are growing actually now internationally faster than we're going nationally because, you know, Europeans and um, people in Asia, they actually, and they, they prefer natural, you know, you know, they they've been tainted by the Duponts of the world. You know, killing you know hundred thousand people or eighty thousand people in Bhopal. So you know, for them to just accept America's toxins, um, it, it unequivocally is is wrong. And and right now I'm watching several videos. One is called Genetic Roulette, and the other one's GMO. And they're both talking about GMOs and the toxicities and how many foods from America are banned and how many products are. And I'm I'm, I'm watching this. And I'm like, wow, we are just the big dumb populace that accepts all these toxins. I mean, GMOs are banned in Europe, but we accept them here, and, and and how Monsanto is such an evil corporation that just, just shoves it down their throats, and they prevent the people from knowing about it, and Michael Taylor was the CEO, or the, one of the presidents of Monsanto, then he goes right back to FDA, and makes new rules, and then goes right back to Monsanto. It's the revolving door, just like the the Federal Reserve and, and people go into Goldman Sachs and Chase and they make the laws and then they give each other you know ten billion dollars a month whether they need it or not because they're too big to fail. So we were talking about how how um, how jaded the whole system is and people say that could be the case. Well, look at look at the records and GMOs are horrid. I was watching it was so important. I was making my son watch it so he would know what they're putting in the food and he can make a decision if he wants to be an experimental guinea pig and it, it was just this is really it, it just it's, it's getting under my skin so much watching how bad it is and all the autism and all these leaky gut syndromes and it's attached to, to the genetically modified corn and soybean and and unless you're buying organic you're eating these toxins and now your family are having these issues too and so it, it the the number of diseases have that have increased over the last 45 50 years because of this gmo is just, is just terrible Right, right. Well, let's not leave out the genetically modified wheat. I was talking to somebody mm-hmm. the other day about, about there's something called off-label usage. Uh, it applies to many different products, including Roundup. And the, uh, the wheat sure. farmers found out, somehow figured out, Some doesn't matter how they found out, they figured out that if they sprayed Roundup on their wheat crop just about, oh, two weeks before harvest, give or take a little, that they would dramatically increase the harvest, um, which is obviously off-label usage, you, you know, because typically you wouldn't do that unless you wanted to kill the wheat. So, <laughs> um, uh-huh. yeah, uh, that, that's and so any commercially grown wheat in, in this country is almost certainly will have had Roundup sprayed on it uh, just before it was harvested, which means you're buying Roundup contaminated with, I mean, you're buying, I, I kind of did a faux pas there, didn't I? You're buying wheat contaminated with Roundup, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. And and, and people say, well, I, I buy organic this, I buy organic that. But if, if they spray it and other animals eat it, and they talk about the number of pigs and cows and animals that eat the the, um, the soy and the corn, now it gets in their body and it affects their fertility, and that also fertility transfer applies to American. I mean, to to women too. And so now, you know, forty years ago they didn't have all these fertility centers around, and they've they've you know they've blown up in in numbers because of the number of uh, women who are infertile, and that's directly attached to the amount of you know to the the diet and uh, consumption of genetically modified uh, diseases. I mean, diseases, organisms. And, well, there's you know, a double I mean, whammy. You're, you're right, Leon, and there's a double whammy here because uh, 
men under 40 years old, under 35 years old, have a dramatically lower level of testosterone. So you got the women having issues with fertility, and you got the men with lower levels of testosterone, which uh, adds up to um, a real problem when it comes to uh, people having children, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I've had many women uh, over the last 10 years contact me, you know, saying, what do you do for this? And, and after reading about the, the impact of how, how much GMO, how much it affects fertility across the board in animals and in humans. And, and so now I would uh, unequivocally say you need to go completely organic and eliminate all your convenience, pop, all your, your pop foods. Do not go out and eat you know, the, the corn that you get free or the corn chips you get free at the Mexican restaurants, it, it, with, with, with very few exceptions, is not commodified. So that affects your ability and your fertility and sterility. So if children are important in your life and you want to have them, stop eating out while you're uh, trying to conceive. And the, and the woman, they had three doctors said, stop at least seven weeks prior to uh, conception of all of all the chemicals and... Um, do it your entire uh, birth cycle, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely change that and, and still continue to advocate the oils, but they need to stop eating the toxins that are going to affect their babies in the first place. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're killing ourselves is what we're doing. Yes, sir. And uh, the Lotera oils will help. On one hand, on the other, uh, don't look at the doTERRA oils as a silver bullet. Uh, it's not the do-all, end-all, cure-all. If you make lifestyle changes, dietary changes, attitude changes, and incorporate the doTERRA oils, then you're going to see results, won't you? Absolutely. I agree to 100%. And I, I, when I look at the, the, the different modes, there's different mod- modalities and protocols you can use to improve your health. And one of the first ones is you know, drinking purified water. You know, use a Berkey, you know, and I talked to this man about uh, reverse osmosis, and I asked him, you know, what he thought about that. And, how, and he, he was a purveyor of the machines for, you know, $3,000. He said, oh, no, there's no scientific evidence about, you know, oxygen and water leaching out minerals from the, from the bones. And, and I was asking, can you show me the evidence that, that says it does not? And he was like, he started stammering and dancing, and I was like, wow, well, you know, um, please show me that, because, you know, I don't like the idea of having... Drinking, you know, drinking somebody's um, recycled urine that comes out of the the um, and with with the preponderance of uh, VOCs and um, all the drugs that America's on, you know, it's already in our water system. So that's why you have to purify it because all we're doing is the water treatment plants. They they extract the best they can and then they just put it in chlorine and fluoride now here in America and pump it out. So you know. Like you said, we are killing ourselves. So, yes, you have to have organic food as much as you can and purified water for sure. And so, you know, you can get the, the Berkey water filters from John and the organic food. Um, I would definitely say get it from local farmers if you can get it. If not, definitely get it at the, the, the places that you can that's, you know, truly organic. And that's why it's good to meet the, the farmers because then you can build a relationship and especially the ones that have organic cows and, and other other livestock, because then you, you meet the owners as compared to just getting it out of a plastic bag in a, in a, at, a, at a supermarket. But yes, Absolutely. changes are going to have to be made. Absolutely. Well, I know a lot of, a lot of I say the majority of the listeners of the John Moore Radio Show are interested in health and nutrition and having the happy, full, fun, productive, healthy life we all want to have. That's why we talk about this every Tuesday, to help those individuals find out what will be helpful to them, what can't possibly cause harm. Uh, now, you, if you get one of these hot oils on your finger, you don't want to touch uh, a, a, any uh, sensitive organ like your eyeball, for example. So be sure, and, and if you get any oils on your hands, to thoroughly wash your hands. Other than that, they can they can cause no harm, right, Leon? Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, the the sensitivity oils. I mean, the people are really light complected. There's a thing called photosensitivity, and it very rarely applies. But if people put on, you know, if, um, 
like some of the, the citrus oils on their skin and they go out in the sun, you know, sometimes their color, their skin will discolor and that may be for a day or two and it goes away. But, you know, I always tell people, if you know you're in a very tropical or sunlit area, just put it on your tongue and you'll still get all the benefits. You Hold that get. thought, Lynn. And just Hold that thought. We've got a break. We'll be right back. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge. And knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. J.R. Moore here on Tuesday, the 10th of December. In about eight weeks, Leon and I will be boarding the Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, Harmony of the Seas, the John Moore Patriot Symposium Cruise. If you want to join us, get away from the snow, the ice, the cold, the slop. Yeah, just check out the John Moore Patriot Symposium Cruise on our website at thelibertyman.com. I believe there's still cabins available. I haven't talked to our cruise director, Betsy Murphy, in a few days, but the last time I talked to her, there were cabins available. If you want to talk to Betsy Murphy about getting a cabin and going on a cruise with us, just give her a call at 636-530-9502. I say again, 636-530-9502. We're with Leon Green. We're talking about doTERRA essential oils, the purest 
essential oils you can get that you can get your hands on. They do not cable. They do not carry warnings on the single oils that you should not take them internally. Now, some of the blends I don't recommend taking internally, do they, Leon? Well, some of them they, they talk about them. Um, like, which one are you referring to specifically? I think like there's an on guard, I mean, an on guard one that you don't take internally. No, <laughs> no, sir. That's that's it's definitely not, not one of the ones. Oh, okay. No, to on guard specifically for people that prevent from getting sick. You're probably thinking of some of the. No, I know um, because of salicylic acid, which is natural. Um, that's what that's what aspirin's made of. The FDA mandates that people, you know, they say you can't do that. So when you think about things like wintergreen and. Um, the, like the uh, deep blue sublingually, you know, they, they don't recommend that, but, you know. I, I wouldn't I, want to put my, deep my, blue under my tongue. I don't think so. <laughs> I agree. No. <laughs> uh, that would not be a pleasant so experience, it, to say the least. Uh, right. Um, you feel like you're on fire, gallons. probably. Say again? Yes. You'd have to consume gallons of balance or uh, wintergreen to have any hepatoxic or liver toxicity issues. And so what because the FDA mandates that with all supplements and even drugs, you know, doTERRA is just genuflecting to them saying, okay, we're just going to put it on there. We know you can put it on there, but one drop is not going to make a difference to your liver. No, um, no or even and, two or three as far as that goes. Exactly. Well, yeah, uh, this is a time of year where we're approaching uh, uh, the 1st of January here in about three weeks. People start uh, thinking about their life, thinking about where they've been this past year, where they want to be the next year. And frequently, uh, what's, what's commonly called New Year's resolutions, will have resolutions concerning two things, uh, weight, typically losing weight, some people need to gain, and health in general. And if that's something you want to work on and improve in, in 2020, which is 21 days away, I think you need to get a copy of the book, Modern Essentials, 5th edition, and Modern Essentials, 11th edition. You need to go to my website, check out the doTERRA oils there. You may need to talk to Leon privately, uh, so you can get a consultation about what might help get you off to a good start. And there's a, there's a bonus. If you've got that bubbly, outgoing personality, you like to talk to people, you might be able to turn to Terra Oils into a, another stream of income, couldn't you, Leon? Absolutely. And, and even for people who aren't so bubbly, many people are doing, doing it online. They, you know, they use social media, and they already have a platform, and they have lots of friends and militias on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other um, media platforms. And then they can use that using as a way to, to communicate and to, to to show people the benefits. That's right. So That's even right. If, in a modern age, even a bashful person can be successful. Leon, what's that telephone number to call you, sir? Yes, sir. It's three zero three four nine or five two one eight eight Mountain Time. And that is three zero three four nine or five two one eight eight. That's Leon's uh, telephone. Mountain Time. Call him during business hours. Mountain Time. If, if you miss him, leave a message. He'll get back with you. Leon's a busy guy, always doing what I call adventure training, much to my chagrin that I can't be out there with him doing it. But there'll be some opportunities, I'm sure, Leon, where you and I might be training together, couldn't there? Absolutely. And I wish we could coordinate something down in the Florida time frame that we could actually do something. Maybe Steve could get involved and we could do something even for three hours at the range. I think that'd be fun. It would be. It would be. That's a good thought, and uh, we'll see if we can put something together down there. Uh, I've got a new 1911 that it's. Uh, I've got it sighted in, and it's just a joy to shoot. Uh, it's a Rock <laughs> Island with all the upgrades to it, and um, nice. got a. What Rock Island is known for, as far as high quality materials and workmanship, is an excellent trigger. And this this little pistol was well, not so little. It's a pretty much a full size 45, but. Um, <laughs> A little bit smaller than a government size, but it's just a joy to shoot with the nice trigger it has. So, uh, and I I just picked up some uh, Ed Brown stainless steel mags to go with it. Uh, they're beautiful magazines um, that Ed Brown turns out. And um, yeah, let's see if we can do that. There's, there's I'm sure there's pistol ranges nearby there. It's it's in Metro Orlando, of course there is. 
And uh, I prefer outdoors, but I'll bring hearing protection in anyway. Uh, I don't like indoor ranges, particularly. Um, we have a bomb in the hour break. We'll be right back. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back, J.R. Moore, here on Tuesday. It is Tuesday, the 10th day of December. 21 days left in the year. My website is thelibertyman.com. That's thelibertyman.com. This is time of year when people uh, have some more discretionary time than usual. And uh, watching movies and TV shows that typically they don't have the time for. Keep this in mind. Our project. This is something the listeners do. I, I can't possibly look at all the tens of thousands of hours of movies and TV shows produced the last 60 years. Uh, none of you can as an individual, but as a group, we can watch a lot of movies and TV shows. If you ha- see a movie or a television show, it has images of continents with different coastlines, new coastlines. Get that screen capture to me, and we'll add it to the list. I think it's a growing list. This is, we're starting our fourth year next month. A growing list of images from TV shows and movies of continents with different coastlines. It's a fun project. If you find one, get that screen capture to me. You get your choice of any of my six DVDs as a thank you. A lot of fun. Right down the street from me, we've got a hobby farm for sale. It's the only hobby farm in my zip code for sale that I'm aware of. A friend of mine, he's a commercial and, and general uh, contractor. He... Uh, got this place fixed up just the way him and his wife wanted it for their retirement. And then they decided to move a a couple hundred miles away to be closer to their children. So the place is for sale. A hobby farm already set up, functioning, ready to go. How unusual is that? And it's 27 acres for less than $200,000 with the uh, home, a guest house out back, nice pasture land for horses or cattle. Uh, a nice small lake, and some outbuildings, uh, and of course, all the um, gardening uh, amenities that you would need uh, to continue it being a hobby farm. And last but not least, the energy cleaner. My home business, when you place your order, I box it up, I take it to the little country post office where they have all you can eat catfish buffet most every Friday for eight bucks with sides. How about that? I put it on the counter at the little country post office, and it goes out priority mail, signature confirmation. If you're tired of being tired, if you're tired of the arthritis pain, and you want a great night's sleep like I get every night, well, get yourself an energy cleaner. Keep in mind I offer a 90-day money-back guarantee. Details at my website under products, the drop-down menu, where you can place your order using PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. i got a toll-free order line 24 hours a day. Don't call me at this number. It's only orders only. 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. We're visiting with Leon Green, as we do every week. That's how important this is. We talk every week about doTERRA essential oils. Leon, we don't know what's going to happen in 11 months. We know what could happen. And if what happens it interrupts commerce, disrupts our economy. People aren't going to have access to their normal uh, pharmaceutical prescription drugs, will they? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. Anyone who do, does receive the, the pharmaceuticals in the mail, FedEx and UPS will shut down. I mean, it happens when, when there's a major tornado or a major you know, a fire like in California. Everybody stops. Now they're on the road trying to get away from the fire with whatever they can carry with them. A lot of times, you know, when they always talk about the bug out bags, you should always have your your meds in there. And so, you know, the people who have that, 
issue, they're going to be completely impacted, and they won't have the record, so if they're dealing with any medical professionals, and you have to figure out what grandpa has or grandma has, you will, you will, um, you will be definitely at a loss for words, especially if they're incapacitated. I mean, and so if you don't stock up now, you, you'll have those issues, and it applies with just like getting ammo and getting gas, water. You can't buy these things at the last minute. They always sell out. They do the same thing with generators. They don't care how much they cost. They'll spend two thousand dollars on a generator, three thousand dollars, and they jack up the prices because they know right. people are desperate. So, why right. go through that wasted money when you know calamities occur? And if you are at a preparedness or even thinking about it, now is the time to get it before it is too late because you won't be able to buy ammo. And look what happened to the guns and ammo when they started doing all those restrictions back in the Obama time. Things, you know, an AR would go for fifteen hundred, two thousand. I talked to one guy; he spent twenty five hundred dollars. I'm like, that was totally retarded. He can, right. Now he sells it now, and he's lost, you know, eighty percent of his the money. So, right. Right. Um, people will take advantage of that. So you should you should use foresight and and t- use foresight and acquire things now. And the oils will not be available. Acquire the oils, the shut. oils, and the knowledge, and both are available at my website at thelibertyman dot com. There's a drop-down, well, I don't sell the books, but uh, there's a drop-down menu under products for the doTERRA oils uh, landing page. And uh, just get get your hands on these two books. Same book, different editions. Modern Essentials is the title. Modern Essentials. Fifth edition, which says things are not allowed to say anymore. And the 11th edition, that was published in September. If you need a private consultation, you don't want to discuss your health issues in front of 11,000, 12,000 people, just give Leon a call at 303-495-2188. If you want to start your own home business, Leon will be your coach. He knows this far better than I do. You can call him about starting your own business with doTERRA oils at 303 303- Four nine or five two one eight eight. People are going to ask Leon if I want to start my own business. How much capital do I need to get started? Well, I always tell people get the largest kit that you can afford and don't go in debt. Well, that's, that's a that's a good answer. I like that answer uh, because getting started means getting a kit. And I, of course, I got a kit myself, the the largest one I could afford at the time. And um, I'm glad I got it because once I got that kit. It was just a good feeling knowing that I'd done something that would help my preparedness, help the people I care about to to be healthy during normal times, during a crisis. And that's all it takes. And entry level can be uh, how mu- about how much money for that entry level kit if people are really strapped for cash. Yeah, I mean, I, the kit I got was the, the Natural Solutions Kit. You can give it on to the... Um, to the um, Home Essentials Kit, and so it really depends on which one. But, you know, if you have a kit, then you can share oils with others, and you can also have a litany of experiences you, you've already had yourself with the oils. So for, like, the deep blue and the pain and climbing a roof um, and um, sleeping with lavender and uh, detoxifying with the uh, with the lemon, So and especially with On Guard. I mean, so if everybody in your, in your office suite is sick and you're taking On Guard, you know, um, once or twice a day, and they're coughing and they're missing work because they're sick, and that protects you. The, the confidence you have in the oils will be will be superb. And so that's why it's important that you have the oils at your disposal. I've had many people say, "I just want to make money. I don't care about." It. I'm like, you know, that is not why DoTerra exists. It, it, it is. Have you had people money. tell you that? It, have you had people tell you that? Well, I've had people. Yes, sir. I've had people say, "I'm just here to make money." It's like you know, you've come for the wrong motivations. You can make a lot here if you're if you're serious. But if if you're not coming here to help other people and get healthy yourself, then your your motivations may be a little askew. And so I've told them that, and like, and and, and I think a couple of them walked away. But you know, we're not looking for well, that's okay. people. We're looking that's for- okay. We we yeah. we need we need people who understand this and believe in it and want to participate because it's the right thing to do, not just as a money maker. Absolutely. They let let them walk on down the road and sell shoes or uh, refrigerators or something else. Um, well, I'm here at the website, and uh, under starter kits, the least expensive one, uh, wholesale is 160 retails $213.33. And um, uh, that's, that's pretty reasonable. It's pretty reasonable. Um, 
I, I've spent more than two hundred dollars for one tire for my automobile, so uh, that, that's you know a very reasonable price, I think, uh, to start a business. Uh, you, I don't think you're going to find very many businesses, legitimate, real businesses, that you can start for just a couple hundred bucks in capital. What do you think, Leon? Absolutely, and, and you're right about that. And so, I mean, I've had people who've come here, and you know, for less than less than six hundred dollars, start their business. And in, in seven or eight years, have exceeded over a million dollars in income, not not in volume, because I, I do a, roughly a million dollars in volume each month now, but, you know, 29,000 people. So it's not a matter of they've actually exceeded a million dollars in less than six years just doing the tariff. And that's actual take-home pay. So when people are motivated, yes, they can make a huge impact. But if, if they're not, if they just want to help mom and pop, that's great. You know, we let them go at the speed that they want to. And when they see the benefits and then they start seeing the referral commissions from the company, they get they start to get more motivated. So, you know, I'm looking for people who really want to make a difference in their health and their family's health and then eventually the health of the world. And so that's why we do these these shows so we can educate people. And right now, my big kick right now is the, the genetic GMO. That is that is something I'm going to be preaching from the rooftops of how they need to start changing their diets. And when I say GMOs, if you, if you can get organic – most of the organic uh, produce is anywhere from 10 to 20% more expensive. And there are different produce that are less susceptible to the, the pesticides. So all the poisons they spray on the insecticides and herbicides that are less susceptible. So the ones you should definitely are the berries, the strawberries. Those are one of the most toxic ones. So get those organic. But there are apples other ones are that you can get that are Apples are heavily, yes. heavily sprayed with uh, various, yes, uh, uh, various sprays they spray on apples. Uh, when I was, you know, 50 years ago, I, uh, 20, uh, 45 years ago, I didn't understand what organic food meant. I really, I, I didn't, I just didn't understand. I didn't get it because I, I hadn't looked into it. But um, I, I get it now, and I understand the value, even though there is a slightly greater charge. Uh, I understand the value in organic fruits and vegetables and meat, too, as far as that goes, uh, and eggs. Um, so, so the value is there in organic food. The value is there in the in, in the DoTerra oils, which is organic. Also, all the uh, DoTerra oils are organic, aren't they, sir? But actually, they're beyond organic because they test um, when they actually get in the bottle. Many companies can will do tests, um, you know, at the site. Well, if the if the grower is making organic lavender, but the people across the street are spraying Roundup. You're still going to get Roundup in your lavender, and that's why DoTerra was started because the the chief medical officer said, "I want to test these for glyphosate." And the other owner of the company said, "No, you're not going to do that." And he, this gentleman, tested anyway out of his own pocket and found out there was glyphosate in it. And so he he brought it to the attention. They were summarily fired, and DoTerra was started because of Roundup. Because he was saying, "I'm not going to put these toxins on my children," and the other the other person said, um, "If you don't like it, too bad. There's a door." And he fired four or five people summarily one day, and right. they were all unemployed. And they said, "You know, we need to make a change in the world." And these oils are so precious; we need to educate people, and they need to be beyond organic. So these are the most potent and the most powerful oils, and the most pure essential oils in the world. I mean. You can go to source2u.com, type in lavender, and you can see exactly the information. And on the bottles, we're the only company in the world that does it. There's a QR code that shows you the exact batch number, when it was made, where it was made, everything attached to it. The, the components, no other company in the world is allowed to do that. They always hide behind the, you know, the trade secrets or like the government says, national security. They hide behind that, you know, that false, that facade. But doTERRA says, look, we're going to be completely transparent this is what we have. And so many other, because we're the 800-pound gorilla in the, in, the, in the industry, everybody is coming after us. And so we've been to court many times, and we have evidentiary um, and secured evidence that we lock up every one of the batches of, of oils. So when people said this had this, we still have the original testing data, and we still have the oils from 10 years ago. So if anyone says that, we have the proof to show them how powerful they are, there is no glyphosate. There's no toxins, pesticides, insecticides 
any filler in any of the oils. And so that's why it's important where you get your oils. And I have so many people, they say, well, my friend decided they'd go buy it on at Wally World. I'm like, they're buying gasoline with a pretty smell. There's no right, medicinal right. or therapeutic benefits. And then they're going to lump it all together saying, oh, essential oils don't work. Well, gasoline doesn't work, so why do you think getting it for 98 cents at Wally World is going to be effective? But people, they're the same ones who just buy junk food and think, well, it says natural or pure on it. That's the same thing with the oils. That is just a industry standard that there is no official standard. The, the Europeans have a better standard than Americans do. If, if it's they can put all natural and pure, they only need to have 4% of that essential oil in there, and the rest can all be coconut oil or any other oil they want. And so people don't read and they don't earn. And so they're making assumptions that, oh, the, the oils didn't work for me. Well, I'm kidding. You're thinking gasoline is going to help you get rid of a headache? No, it's not. It's going to cause a headache. So it's, it's, just, it's just counterintuitive, but people are, people are strange. Well, people are people, and uh, that's why I, I tell people the Bible is such a marvelous book because it's a study, among other things, the Holy Bible is a study in human nature, which has not changed and will never change. Uh, the people who wrote the Bible 2,000 plus years ago, they may not have had cell phones and internet, but they understood human nature, and that's what you're referring to is uh, human nature, aren't you, Leon? Yes, sir. And I understand they want to save a buck. But when it's your health and your children's health, ignorance is not bliss. And like that medical doctor I've seen many times say on, on, on TV and on the radio, you will either pay now or you'll pay later. But if you don't pay for organics now, you're going to pay for medical surgeries later. Because Damn. your body will not accept toxins infinitely. And that's why you see we're one of the most toxic and most disease countries in the world, even though we have we're one of the, the wealthiest countries, right. definitely per capita, but right. we have all these diseases because we eat all this junk food. That's right. That's right. Well, you need to educate yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Educate yourself on the oils. Educate yourself on nutrition. That, that's a good quest. Uh, become a part of our team uh, that uses doTERRA oils. I use the doTERRA oils every day in one form or another. I use it to do my laundry. I put the lemon oil in my in my drinking water. I have on guard in a, uh, um, a machine that puts it into the air, and um, uh, just it's just part of my daily life. Uh, and uh, the more you do it, the more you want to do it, right, Leon? Absolutely. When I travel, I, I take a batch of oils with me all the time. I mean, I have my bug out, my bug out stuff in my vehicle, and now I'm because of everything we're talking about and things going south. You know, I carry I carry my protection, including you know, armor and um, nods with me when I travel because I don't want to be stuck in the middle of Wyoming and now I have to walk back home with nothing on it and no protection. So, you know, I am definitely ramping up my. Not only my adventure training, but everything practically. And I carry my oils with me all the time. Hold that thought, Leon. We have a break. We'll be right back. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth.
All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back here. We got our, about three and a half, four minutes left to visit with Leon. Talk about how you can improve your life, have a healthier life, be more productive, do the things that you want to do. It may be golfing, fishing, hunting, uh, canoeing, whatever it might be, bicycling. Uh, because you you're no longer suffering from the pain you had, you've got more energy. Uh, the various ailments that you're dealing with are now under control safely as opposed to expensive, dangerous pharmaceutical products. Uh, Leon and I frequently mention this, but I'm well into my fourth decade of not taking any pharmaceutical products. My last pharmaceutical prescription was the fall of 1985. I'm more than halfway through my fourth decade. Looking forward to finishing up my fourth decade and starting my fifth decade of no pharmaceutical products, prescription pharmaceutical products for John Moore. And um, if an issue comes up, I use doTERRA oils, and I keep modern essentials nearby. Uh, a little thing pops up. I, I look up uh, what I need to be doing that to mitigate using doTERRA oils. I make sure I've got the oils in stock. If I don't, I just place an order. And a couple of days later, it's in my mailbox at the Cherryville Post Office, Leon. That's my lifestyle. That's how I live. And uh, I want to encourage other people to please consider uh, adopting a similar lifestyle where uh, you walk by the pharmaceutical prescription counter and, and think, boy, I'm sure glad I don't need to be standing there waiting for my prescription. Well, how about you, Leon? Absolutely. And it's the same way. I mean, the last time I visited a hospital you know, uh, was only because I was going to see friends and clients, their relatives who were in the hospital. And so, you know, the first thing I said is, are they open to the natural oils or natural natural solutions? And, and if they say no, then it's like you don't need to waste your time because it's just going to go past their head. So, you know, I have to ask and I have to ask the uh, the person specifically. If you are, I'd be quite interested in helping you, and I'll even give you the sample so you can see the benefits. So, it's it's all a matter of acceptance and making a, a, a mindset change. Can I uh, can I say the names of these two books, the two DVDs I I found? Please, these please. I had them in life yeah. from, from the, they were free. Um, it's called one is called GMO OMG, a genetically modified uh, organism, and then um, oh my God by Jeremy Seifert, and it's GMO, OMG, is, is this the end of real food? And then the other one is called Genetic Roulette. It has a lot more doctors on that one. And that one is, um, it was by Jeffrey Smith in the Gamble of Our Lives. And, and one of the statements on the back said, we are all part of a large, uncontrolled experiment. And this is a doctor Lawrence Plumley, medical doctor, former EPA medical officer. And so they have a bunch of medical doctors who are now um, turncoats. They're actually telling the truth. And, and a lot of the uh, GMO stuff is banned up in Canada. But their southern brethren, they just, uh, they have, they've just not seen the light. And that's what these two DVDs are about. You can get them for free at the library if you have a sophisticated one. Or if you have a network of libraries, so track so I got these. One was a transfer and one was local. So That's definitely learn about it. Very.